Yep, Atlanta Zone Way Ball Station is out on 7-9. Your Dirty J. Nick's Flask getting ready. I'm back to doing interviews outside of COVID-19. Has ruined everything. Um, Even uh, R. Kelly's life. No, I think he might have ruined his life by himself. But it's all good. We out here, man. I got Miss Justine Scott checking in, representing Brooklyn. Yeah. What's up, BK? <laughs> What's up? What the hell got going on? Um, You know, just living life. You living life. alive in this world. Come on, Creating. man. It's, it's not that bad. No, it's not bad. That's Why not you trying to make it seem like living life like I'm just a, like you just getting that's not five a bad thing. Shit. That's not a bad thing. Okay. Living life is amazing. But you said surviving. I thought you were just like, yeah. What's surviving. going on with your survival tactics? Just, you know, like the COVID, just trying to stay healthy and trying to stay creative and motivated, all that. So where have you been? So how do you feel about the vaccine? Because they're making this vaccine kind of mandated now. Like, how do you feel about that? I think that that's none of my business. <laughs> Are you vaccinated? Well, clearly you're vaccinated. Yeah, I am. Okay, so, I mean, how do you feel about that? Like, do you think that everybody should get vaccinated, or you kind of just stay neutral? I think it's none of my business. Okay. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's that curve she was talking about, huh? <laughs> okay, well, um, okay, so I've been in your business. You know, when I interview yeah. somebody, I try to get on Twitter and do everything like this, all, all type of stuff. You, you're at, you kind of tweet a little craziness now. What's been going on with you and Twitter? Why do you think people are trying to tear you down? What's going on? Twitter is... Like, I feel like most people, especially most artists, have a love-hate relationship with Twitter. Mm-hmm. Because it's all fun and games when, like, you see the memes and the jokes coming through and you're laughing and all the videos coming. But when, they, when they're attacking you, mm-hmm. it's kind of like finding that balance of, like, what? what like, what's going on? And, like, I don't care what they say. Like, who is this person? But does it bother you a little bit? Because I had the opportunity to, like, experience, like, a little bit of, um, I guess, uh, reality TV. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're, people are really rude and have a lot to say behind the keys. Oh, but absolutely. They would never say that in your face. Never. They would never say it in your face. And honestly, that's just something you always have to remember, too, in those moments. And sometimes you got to turn up on them. But someone just told me very recently, people don't throw stones down. Mm. That's what it is, right? So that means that they're looking up to you. And, like, mm. as an artist, it's your job to provoke. Right. Whether that's good or bad. Like, that's literally what you're meant to do as an artist is to entertain. And so, obviously, we're still normal, like, human beings. At the end of the day, we have feelings and emotions. So sometimes we might, like, clap back. Right. But ultimately, you have to just remember how blessed you are. Right. And so in these moments, like, yeah, I had to just, like, defend myself. But you have to really realize, like, Arguing with a fool, like, you can't do that. Right. Like, because then people, onlookers may not be able to tell the difference. That's a quote that I always, like, try to live by. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously sometimes, like, right, you, you, <laughs> you don't. T- t- <laughs> you, t- <laughs> you dabble because you just feel like, I don't know, it's like, it's just disrespectful. And, like, when you see this consistent disrespect, you just be like, um, I'm sorry. Who do y'all think y'all talking to? Mm. And then you just go back to work. So what's the craziest thing that, that made you just, like, I don't want to say nothing, but I have to say it. Because, you know, certain things be like, ah, oh, I let that slide. But what have you seen that made you be like, you know what, y'all got me, y'all got Justine fucked up, Charlotte. I mean, there's a lot of things that people could say. I don't acknowledge, like, most of it. But when it comes to just, like, me as an artist, there's just, like, this narrative that, like, like I'm either boring or it's just pretty privilege or this or that or why isn't it working and all these questions. And ultimately, I'm realizing, wait, like, my name is in all of your mouth, so... Mm. And all you have to do is use your freaking Spotify or your Apple or Google. Like, if like you really want to hear my song. Well, I, mean, you know? I, looked, I looked you up. You're doing your thing. Like, I, what are they thinking? What are they saying? Like, you, I mean. I don't know. I don't, people are just, like, miserable. And they project as well, too. They project as well, too, because of whatever is going on in their own lives. And which is, like, it's fine. That's just how they deal with it. And as an artist, like, it's kind of just something you have to, like, expect. Right. And. As time progresses and the industry progresses and just, like, music progresses and social media, it's kind of, like, we're evolving in a way where just, like, opinions just fly left and right. Right. And we're figuring out how to maneuver around that as artists and just people who are in the limelight um, and or have a big inf- an influencer even. Like, it's kind of just, like, when you have that platform, you automatically sign up to be, like, ridiculed. Right. So, I mean, it looks like you're doing good. You know what I mean? You're not no spring chicken with this music. Because the music, I, I looked it up. It was a couple 
couple projects you done got came you had came out already. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know what they're slacking off of. I mean, I think this. I think the bigger artists in the world, like the biggest artists, have always had a story. Yeah. Has absolutely. always had multiple projects, but I think that sometimes. Uh, with social media world, we don't look that up. We don't understand that Fifty Cent probably had like was signed to three different labels prior Mad to him. Mixtapes. Yeah, like, and it's it's kind of crazy. Um, I remember one time I was just like, I was just doing like a deep dive on Lizzo, and I was just, like on her app, and I was like, wait, she put out music way back then, right? And I was like, okay, like cool, like this is just the grind. This is the grind of being an artist. And honestly, if your favorite artist gave up when things got too tough, they wouldn't hmm. be your favorite artist today. Talk to him. So it's like. You hit these obstacles, and it's but that's just a lesson through life. Like you hit an obstacle, and it's like, are you gonna like back down from it or like push through it? Because when you get through it, on the other side, you're stronger, right? And you're more prepared for the next time if there is a next time. And so, all of this is just like, it's a lesson. Do you think they pretty girl you too much? Like, oh man, she's just doing this because she's pretty, da 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 da. Because you popping. I looked up. I mean, they got all type of information about you on Insta, on <laughs> on on, on, a, on the world wide web now. I know. I wish I could, like, delete it. How, how do they get all this information? I don't know. Like, does it get frustrating? Yes. Because I've seen, I'll keep it funky because we've been real. I've seen, like, a list of guys you dated. I don't know I'm not going to say any names. <laughs> but I'm just like, this has to be rude. Like, you know what's so funny? I was at dinner with one of my homegirls the other night, and I was telling them about this website. And I'm like, you know, like, all the celebrities, like, there's a website that has, a, like, a list, a track list of everyone that everyone's dated. I'm talking about from one to eight. You haven't hit ten yet. The last one I looked at was eight. Okay. And that's the recent. Uh-huh. I'm not going to say any names. I'm pretty sure that it's already out there. <laughs> so how do you feel about that? Like, like just being, have, trying to live a normal life, mm-hmm. you know? Especially during COVID. You know, you have to care about family a little bit more. You got to look out for your elders a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you deal with that? And then you go on the internet and all your business out there, like. Um, you just have to realize that it's different. Mm-hmm. Like, real life is real life. And social media is social media. It's work at the end of the day. Um. And you have to, like, learn how to separate it. As easy as that is to say, it's not easy to do. But you get through it. These are just words that are online. And sometimes they can hit harder than others. But it's just another game, guys. Dude, would you consider yourself, I think everybody's emotional. But you said something. You said it's not an emoji angry enough. As, as mad as I am right now, it's no emoji matter. Talking about these emojis be having flames coming out their head. Now, how mad were you when you no, tweeted that? No, there really isn't. If you actually look, it's just like that red guy with the, like the curse thing over the mouth. Like, what the hell am I supposed to do with that? Yeah. Like, I need like the head exploding, the eyes angry, like the Arr, like all that. So what <laughs> happened at that moment? What made you that mad when you tweeted that? I actually wasn't mad when I said that. Girl, I was just you like, lying to us now. No, on, I, man, I promise you, I wasn't mad. Sometimes I just tweet random shit. Like, okay. I just like, I have these thoughts and I'm like, you know what? The next time I'm mad... Or maybe I was texting somebody and I was like, I wanted to be mad and like there wasn't like an angry enough emoji. Because one thing, like if my mom texts me and like we're having an argument or something or anyone texts me and they add an emoji into it, I'm like, it just debunks everything that we were mm. talking about. I'm like, oh, so this is a joke. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, I get that. All right, I got it. So what would you think about like dating in the industry? Because I think that sometimes like women, like as far as men, we get, we can we can go and do this and do that and have a good time and mess with this woman, this woman, this woman, this woman, this woman. And it's almost like we get props. But when a woman pretty much dates in her, I guess, category, you know, you're not going to go down. You're not going to date, you know what I'm saying, a guy that's really doing his thing and then date a bum. Yeah, that's something that's just not going to happen. Like, I'm not going to go from a pretty girl to a hood rat. You know what I'm saying? So how do you feel about that as far as just like how society judges women and how they date in y'all, y'all dating life? Um, I think it's kind of fucked up. Mm. It's absolutely fucked up how women get, like, judged for their dating history, um, but men get praised for it. Right. Um, And even if they are, like, praising a woman for it, they're like, yeah, go ahead. It's just, like, negative. Right. It's just always negative towards women, and honestly, it doesn't matter. Right. It really doesn't matter, because it's not your life. It's theirs. It Mm. has no effect on you whatsoever, and the past is the past, and their future is their future. It's just like, but I get it. It's entertaining for people, um, but it is real life right. for them as well too. And so, um, as artists, sometimes or just as celebrities, like you can't, hide, you can hide it for but so long, right? And then um, one picture. But once it's like, yeah. But then once it's in the like in the world, then it's the world's. Mm. Okay. I ain't mad about it. So, what is it like dating in the industry? Like, like how is that? Like, is it difficult? Do you find yourself like, being able to like? maneuver through that because I, I, I can just uh, I couldn't imagine not having like my own personal space like mm-hmm. I, like talking to interviewing Mulatto and 
and just different artists like that. Like, you would never know who my man is. You can guess it, but I'm never taking a picture with him, never walking hand, holding hands. Like, that has to suck, like, not being able to even travel with your boo just because of what everybody else got to say about it. Um, I think that everyone's different. And, I mean, yeah, sometimes you don't want to talk about it. Like, we're talking about it right now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um. Well, I appreciate you talking to me about it. I mean, I'm just being very, like, vague because, like, ultimately I think this this relates to all aspects right. of anyone, no matter if you're in the industry or not. Mm. You can be a doctor. People are going to talk, right. like, whether it's your friends or, like, people who don't know who you are and they just know of it. Like, people think that these issues just happen, like, in the industry, but they happen all over the world. Right. It's just that in the industry, it's entertainment for, like, the average person. Right, and the, and the spotlight's on it. Exactly. There's definitely, like people who work in, like, athletic training and stuff like that who are like, I'm going to keep my relationship private. Like, right. You know, right. because people just talk. And it's just like, it's just a I'm lesson. like that. Yeah. It's just like, exactly. Right. So it's not just like an industry thing. Um, it's just a human thing. Okay. So what would you tell some of the young girls that striving to be an artist? Because like I said, you, you put out multiple projects. So I definitely got to salute you on that. And I think that, like, your body of work speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What would you tell the young girl that's trying that thinks that this is like an overnight success thing. Like, this is not the overnight success yeah. situation. It's absolutely not an overnight success. It's a lot of, like, it's a lot of a grind. Um, and it's a lot of just obstacles that you have to, like, overcome. Um, and you just can't let it defeat you. You just keep going, following your dreams, and, and trust in yourself. You really have to trust yourself in this industry because you can get confused easily or, like, easily manipulated mm. because there's so many opinions flying left and right and what you should do or how you should be and and ultimately like it's you mm. you are what's being like sold to the world right so so this album that's not a bad thing sold to the world yeah, but yeah. like that's really what it is as an yeah. artist you're like I mean, you're proud of yeah you're that proud is of. what it is so you said this album is like the most vulnerable you've been like why why this project um i feel like because I never had the opportunity, I believe, to, like, write in the way and in the space that I did on this project. Mm. Um, I'm the dominant writer on this album, and every song, like, the skeleton and the root of it stems from me or a situation that I've been through or just how I was feeling in that moment. Mm. Um, so it is very special, and I had to, like, I had to get a little bit uncomfortable, too, to like work on this project and um yeah what are some of those songs that like made you uncomfortable that, that like that's a must hear um that's personal to you like I real shit like real i think a great song which is why i made it like the first actual song on the album is about time because it really just like rounds it all out and like lets you know what you're about to hear on the rest of this project and what you're about to just hear from me as the artist justine sky and just like my story and the space that i've been in um, where it's just a lot of disappointment. Like you face, mm. you put a lot of trust into people and and me, I am very emotional and I Come on, girl, talk to <laughs> me. You're about to make me cry too. Come on now. Come on. No, we're not crying. Okay. But um that song is just it's really special to me and, and I think the people that it, that resonate with it, it, it hits them in a different place too because it's just it's really about like it's about fake friends and fake right. people. And I I'm a very trusting person. Right. So when I get betrayed, it hits deep. Mm. You're a lover. Yes. Okay. So recording in Miami, you had an opportunity to travel to Miami. You know what yeah. I'm saying? A different different scenery. Timbaland. How what the what kind of relationship? What's what's this relationship like? Like nobody just works with Timbo. I know. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, tell me about this. It was crazy. I mean, um, my team, E and E, they've like worked with him um in the past. And so it it had always been like in the talks. Mm-hmm. And then the pandemic hit. And mm. I was like, shit, what is everybody doing? Right. And um, so I was just doing, like, cover videos on, like, on my Instagram. And, and then he reached out and was like, hey, I want to do one. And I'm like, you want to do a cover video with me? And now that I think about this, it was kind of, like, so dumb of me to say. But I'm like, yeah, let's do, like, Say It Right, Nelly Furtado. Like, you got the beat, right? Let's just – I don't even know how that was going to work. Right. But I was like, <laughs> I'm just – I don't know what to do here. Right. I was – so like shook because at this point too like I was already like working on a project and it was more like alternative leaning mm. um, but working with Timberland was always a dream of mine mm. like since a kid 
<laughs> like since like listening to Aaliyah around the house, right. Missy around the house, like Justin Timberlake, like it was just like this is the formula. Like mm. this is what I need for my life. Right. I need to work with Timberland. This is a goal of mine. And you had an opportunity to work with both Justins. Which one's your favorite Justin? If you could pick a Justin, which Justin would be your main Justin? Well, I've only worked with one Justin. So never just I, I read something about Justin Bieber too. No, we're cool. He's like he's like my like brother in law. Okay. <laughs> but um okay. Justin Timberlake now. That Uh oh now. That was like that was something that was like on my list that I didn't even know was on my list. Because mm. I didn't even think that that I didn't even think there. I didn't even think that I would like know him in the way that I do. Right. So you going big like, Justin. I'm like, oh, this is Justin Timberlake. But he's like <laughs> icon, like legend, Come on, man. like sexy back, like what? Are you out of your mind? Like this is crazy. He's like up there. Like up there, up there. Uh, for, for sure. Like up there actually. So that like man, it's so he actually called me the other day about my tweet and it was just like like sis, like you can't do this, this and that. Like you you're, you know, like you gotta stay strong and all that. Just giving me like that brotherly advice and I was like I I stopped him and I was like, you know this is crazy, right? Like I know like I know you now, but right. this is also crazy shocking. that you saw a tweet of mine and decided to call me to check on me. Like it's still like very shocking to me. I, I mean I think that, that that shows like people that's like one hundred in the industry. Exactly. Like, and I said that too. I was just like, you know, like you're you have so many things to do in life. You're actually you're you're working right now and you took the time out to like make sure I was okay. And that's why this project is so special to me because everyone who worked on this project did this because they wanted to mm. and because they believe in me. Right. From the writers to the producers to the features. That's dope. That's dope. So tell me about this bad bitch manual. <laughs> we was talking about this in the elevator now. Yeah. Okay, what's in this bad bitch manual? Because I got some objectives. I mean, like you heard it. It's, some... it's the bad bitch manual. I know that. Obviously the theme song of okay. it is in my bag. Okay. Because you know you gotta stay in your bag. Okay. Regardless what about the of ones that's halfway in their bag? Come on, come on, Justin. I mean, we like, be real. So like <laughs> Come on. But who are, like, why are you saying that? Why you got to call them out? I'm not calling, really, I'm never ever saying anybody's no, but name. It's, it's not about what you have. It's not about how you look. It's really about how you present yourself, you okay. know? Because, honestly, you've seen it. We've all seen it. Like, this person wasn't ugly. They was just, like, in the words of, like, everyone else. Like, what do you like say? Like, bro. <laughs> Come on, Justin. <laughs> come on now. You, come on. Really, don't be sugarcoat no shit now. I'm not. Now. Come on but now. That's what? like, that's what I see a lot of people say. And it's just, like, they. it's always been in you. You just have to have like that confidence. Okay. It doesn't matter how much money you have. So it's a pre manual. You have two man- two different manuals. No. Okay, what's the it's okay. one manual. Okay, so <laughs> being a bad bitch is about how you feel inside and how so you carry yourself. When you walk into a room, it don't matter what you got on. If you walk into the room and everybody turns around and they're looking at you and you're like, I'm I'm here. Can we? What if they not up to the standards of the bad bitch manual? What is that? What does you that need mean to, though? You need to do like a pre tree uh, a little pre bitch manual. <laughs> See what I'm saying? What about the ones that's bad, but they ain't got their furniture in their house yet? But you can't have a bad bitch attitude if you ain't got no headboard. I mean, they those are some things that they have to work out. Those things. Those are some things if that they have not, to work out. If you out. don't got no headboard and you sleep on a blow-up mattress, you have to turn Who your bad you bitch down with a bit. messing with that's in them circumstances? I didn't say I'm messing with nobody. You can but see. clearly you've seen it. It's Instagram. Girls. They post and they blow Listen it? to me. What I'm trying to tell you, this is the main thing I said. Check your background. But why are you shaming them? I'm not shaming them. I'm just trying to get people to the next level. I want to be motivational. I'm, mm. a, so I'm motivating these girls mm. to say, look, it, calm your attitude down just a little bit. You ain't third yet. You about to be. Same thing with the bro guys. No, Scammers. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Scammers, people... same thing. You can't be a, a boss nigga and you asking your girl to borrow her car. Mm-hmm. You can't do that. You can't. You can't ask your homeboy, hey, let me take a picture and hold your money. Well, that's not bad bitch energy. That's what you I'm know? saying. Like I'm faking to... it, like being a bad bitch is being unapologetic. Come on now. Yourself. Come on. That's what getting, now we're getting to it. You know, like not just faking it, okay. faking the funk, trying to like uphold this image that like it's not you. Right. And I feel like that's, I've done a lot of that mm. in like my previous life. Okay. Come <laughs> on, we tell the truth, come on. And so in, in working on this project, I found like a different side of me that I was ready to share with the world and that I was more than proud of. Right. So... So do you think it stems off you just accepting like everything? Like, yeah. This is Loving yourself acceptance. first. Full acceptance. That's a bad bitch. That's a bad bitch. See, that's what I'm saying. That's, that, what, that's see, that, not that, the that, Then we get into it, man. You know what I mean? You got to love yourself first and stop worrying about what everybody else think about you. Exactly. And if you hold yourself to a high pedestal, you're going to keep growing and you're going to keep elevating and be better. Period. 
That's see, that's what I wanted. See, we found it. And you thought I was trying to shit on them. Amen. Okay, that's what we going down, <laughs> man. So look, Twisted Fantasies is out right now. 3.1 million followers on Instagram. Woo! You famous, famous. Man. <laughs> Can I get a shout out on story or something <laughs> can they see my smile can you can i be one of the justins my name starts with a j oh uh, <laughs> so you have multiple projects out okay what is a must if you're a new fan of yours what's a must what project do i have to listen to to space get space and time space and time Absolutely. so this is the one this is the one that's going to set apart from all of them I'm talking this about is the one more than just uh what uh Bear With Me, like, bigger than that. I mean, Bear With Me is amazing, but that was more of, like, a... That was an EP. That was, like, an appetizer. Space and Time is... is Ultraviolet. That's the one. Ultraviolet, it has some it has some bangers on there, you know? I'm not even gonna hold you, you know, like that, I'm but saying, it's like, you know, what I'm what saying. looking at? What, what <laughs> you need me to listen to? I mean, like, you start at Space and Time, and then if you want to explore, you explore. So are you telling me Space but and Time? But it just elevates deal. from there. Tell me, how does the one that's... The, the first, the last one, the newest one elevates from... You can't elevate backwards. You can, saying, you saying like because I feel like it, you can though because there's there's been so many projects that people like don't really understand when it comes out. Mm, okay, and then as time progress and it ages, people are like, "Wait, she been she was kind of onto something right here." Mm. It's happened multiple times. Okay, there's so many examples of that happening. There's so many examples of like songs that have been out for a year and then two years later, come on, now. it pops. I see it all the time in London. Exactly. I know you see it. You on the radio. Yeah, come on. 20 years. So it's like, it's just about staying the course. Like mm. I was saying before, it's staying the course and like not getting defeated. Because this industry is very unpredictable. Come on now. Vultures. Killers. So top three songs of Space and Time. If they didn't have nothing but three songs, three opportunities to listen. Mm-hmm. What three songs? Come on, give them to me. One, two, three. Twist of Fantasy. Okay. In My Bag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Come on, one more. Okay, one more in a bonus. Do it right. Uh huh. Cause that one really is for the bad bitches. Okay. That one's real. I mean, the whole album is shit talking, but like that one, it might hurt your man feelings or like somebody. If somebody's feelings is hurt, I'm pretty prideful. <laughs> but um, <laughs> shit. shit, I don't. It's really hard to. Come on, one more. Um, a bonus. I would say. Mm mm. Mm mm. Okay, now. All right. I'm going to check you out now. Mm-hmm. Show coming up on tour, doing shows, doing your thing. Mm-hmm. Definitely salute you, Queen. I thank you for uh, even coming to check me out and, and taking the time me. out to interview with me. Of course. Well, I went too bad, was it? No, not at all. You weren't about. too scary. <laughs> yeah, man, that's what it's going down, Zaddy. You know what I'm saying? Big two is going down. Miss Justine Skizza. Yeah, Space and Time out right now. Go get that. Ten copies. Stream right now. Woo. For sure. Let's get it. Trap house booming. Next, where you at? We waiting on you at the trap. You already know. We trapping at the trap house. Trap, 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 trap house booming. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.